It seems like every other week we get a new shonen manga out and it's a coin toss of whether or not they stick around. And Kagurabachi was no exception, but in an underdog story from meme to genuinely cool action series, it doesn't seem like this gem of a story is going anywhere anytime soon. And now that I've said that, I really hope I didn't just make this video age very poorly. Anyway, Kagurabachi features the protagonist Chihiro, who in a world full of crime and sorcery, draws his sword against evil. I'm sure you've seen that image go around a while back of him doing exactly that. So let's get into that and talk about just how good at cutting things up he is. How strong is Kagurabachi? Now, in a world of magical powers where people can do all sorts of things from controlling the elements to manipulating people's minds, how does Chihiro even stand a chance? Well, that would be thanks to the enchanted blade Enten, one of only seven like it and a sword that is said to surpass what sorcery is normally capable of. And that's no surprise from what we see of it. Even Chihiro, who is probably nowhere near his full potential, is able to overpower many sorcerers with little difficulty. So let's get into the abilities that lie within that powerful sword. Now at this point in the story, we haven't seen a lot of enchanted blades. But like most main characters, Chihiro's abilities are relatively simple. His first main technique is Kudo, or Black. Represented by a black goldfish, he can release a powerful cut of spirit energy as a ranged attack. If you're a fan of Bleach, it's basically a Getsuka Tensho and is probably his most powerful attack by far. His most reliable method for ending a fight. And he has a couple rather good feats with it. The first being in Chapter 1 when he faces a large group of ordinary swordsmen and a pretty big portion of them get cut in half in a single slash. Now it's definitely up for debate, but I count at least... 30 people here on this panel based on the legs. And that's no easy task, as for a normal person, it would be difficult to pull this off against just one guy. An even more impressive feat that Chihiro manages is in his first fight against the swordsman known as Sojo. Sojo, with the enchanted blade Cloud Gouger, summons this decently sized wave of solid ice. Seems to be a few times taller than Sojo and almost covers the building that he does this on. And then, not only does Chihiro cut this thing in half, we see on the next page that it shatters into pieces on the side furthest from where he cut. This implies to me that the entire thing shattered from the force of his attack. However, this isn't the only use of Kudo. When Chihiro was really injured, he was able to scatter the power of it into 20 individual cuts. Quicker and more compact, but lacking in power. These 20 cuts can even be sent at the same target with enough force to cut through iron without the same toll on his body as a regular use of Kudo would normally entail. But Kudo is not his only attack. His next ability is known as Nishiki. Whereas Kudo takes his spirit energy and sends it out, Nishiki takes that energy and cloaks Chihiro in it. This results in a boost to his attacks. Now this means his strikes here aren't quite as powerful as if he just used Kudo since that's a single condensed release of power. But what's really impressive about Nishiki is the massive boost of speed that it grants. Normally, Chihiro is able to blitz people with ease, but with Nishiki, he was able to fight Sojo at his fastest. You see, Sojo has this ability called Mei that shoots lightning, and it is just straight up real lightning. It responds to a lightning rod, it conducts through water, all that stuff, so it's likely got lightning speed as well. And it does seem that characters in Kagurabachi can react to this high level of speed because we do see this one sorcerer summon a wall of stone to block a blast of lightning in the middle of the attack. Pretty explicitly a lightning speed reaction feat. What's even crazier is then Sojo starts to cloak himself in the lightning to grant himself a boost of speed. This even greater boost of speed is likely explained by how cloaking seems to work in this series. Because when people cloak their body in spirit energy, it seems they can do a Kaioken sort of thing and push that energy past their physical limits. We see this with Sojo who uses twice the energy his body can allow. This would easily explain why he was able to outspeed a sorcerer that should have been able to react to his movements. If we push this scaling even further, then this heavily implies that Sojo can use Mei to push his speed to even twice the speed of lightning. Which really matters because in his second fight with Chihiro, Chihiro was using Nishiki to cloak his body in three times the amount of spirit energy his body would allow, which let him keep up with this doubled up Sojo. This means that Chihiro, when he really pushes himself, is roughly twice the speed of lightning as well. 
Again, though, he was giving himself that Kaioken times three here. So with his normal level of Nishiki, he should still be a little slower than Lightning, just speaking mathematically. This is all pretty explicit too, since in the latest chapter, we have a character see Chihiro use Nishiki and comment on how this is the speed that allowed him to beat Lightning. And Lightning is very fast. It should be mentioned that the stepped leader of Lightning ranges in speed a lot. It can be anywhere from a couple hundred times the speed of sound to literally thousands of times the speed of sound, depending on different factors, of course. Believe it or not, nature does not lend itself well to power-scaling fictional stories, and lightning speed is kinda just a buzzword. But it's still one we can apply here, and makes Chihiro at least capable of reaching hundreds of times the speed of sound. After all, if you want some kind of official number, you do have the United States National Weather Service placing the speed of a step leader at around 200,000 miles per hour. That's around Mach 260. The last ability that Enten grants Chihiro is Akka, the ability to absorb. He uses this to absorb any attack, and then he can release it back at them. We see him use this when he absorbs this one explosion attack and releases it back at the sorcerer who used it on him. And it seems to be implied that Chihiro used it in Chapter 8 to absorb a lightning attack so he could later use it to electrify his blade and turn it into a lightning rod. He just doesn't call out the skill in that scene, so we don't know for sure. There isn't a whole lot to talk about with this ability in terms of scaling because the power of this depends on the strength of the attack he absorbs. Although it is worth mentioning that he doesn't use Akka nearly as often as Kudo or Nishiki, which is kind of weird considering how useful it is. It makes sense why this wasn't a factor in Chihiro's fight against Sojo since that battle heavily relies on their enhanced speed, but Akka is overall a very useful ability, especially since the release of an attack isn't instantaneous. Chihiro is able to hold on to the absorb attack and then release it later in the fight, giving it a great element of surprise. It's an ability that involves perfect defense and great strategic offense. The last thing to really mention about Chihiro is that he is a very skilled fighter. He uses all of his abilities to great effect, and he is a trained swordsman. He's also very adept at using the secondary short sword he carries to create moments of distraction. But other than all that, there's not much left to say. We're very early into this series, and we can be sure that Chihiro is going to get a lot stronger as time goes on. Especially since it seems like this series is here to stay. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a cool series so far, so I felt like talking about it. And if you did like the video, do be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really all does help. In the meantime, take care and have a good one.